What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the eFootball Universe podcast. It's been a while. We've got a fairly bumper episode of the podcast in discussing everything that is currently going on with the game and a look ahead in the future of eFootball 2024. So let's get straight into it and talk to you in a sec. What is the crack, lads? Welcome back. Wes, we're finally here, man. We're back with the podcast. We've had the rebrand. We've had the relaunch. Now we're having another rebrand, another relaunch, and it's just going to continue on from there as we like to do. But look, we are back. It's been a long time. We've been very busy. We've been doing a lot of stuff, but um, which we will get into. But we have a big jam-packed podcast return here for us, Wes, because it has been a couple of weeks. Firstly, man, how are you doing? Welcome back. And it's good to have a good conversation going again with you tonight. It's been a while. It yeah, man, that's an understatement. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that have changed both in eFootball, both in my, my personal life, both in my professional life. Everything has kind of been up in the air. As as I mentioned in one of the live streams that I caught the other night, it, uh, or the other day, should I say, it was like we were like ships in the night a bit <laughs> in terms of the fact that one of us would be free, then the other one would be away, and then the other one would be free, and then it was just, it was just scheduling that's adult life man adult life yeah of course of course <laughs> but uh, again i think i think now is probably a, a very good time for for an e-football podcast um i think because of the obviously the upcoming updates the updates that have previously gone expectations certainly are flying around from the community obviously mm. we're seeing a lot of new cards that are coming out we're seeing a lot of different things that are going on both in esports and tournaments that are going on around the world so what better time to get back involved and what better time to record a new potty than, than right now? Yeah, man, I agree. I mean, as you said, a lot has changed. A lot has happened. I still think that the game is probably... Look, anytime I go live or anytime I do a video, it's like, <laughs> when's the next podcast? Why don't you talk about this? Why don't you talk about that? Um, and I think the podcast is kind of an interesting one because we have it's like a long form kind of like discussion where we're like talking about things at length that sometimes you can't get across in a video because... It's like every video I do, man, or every like discussion we have. You could make an hour conversation out of it, or you could make 10 minutes out of it, and you still don't get the full picture. So I do think with the podcast, it is a case of, you know, picking the topics, going through them, and then we do eventually, we keep saying this, lads, we keep saying this, <laughs> and I'm to blame, right? It's not Wes, even though I'll blame Wes today, but it you is me to blame. I We are going to be doing a live podcast. We want to be kind of like the first live podcast where we have guys ringing in, like a talk show kind of thing having topics coming on um we just need to work out a couple of bits and pieces and ways that'll be a bit of crack because we'll have a bit of banter with people you know i'm sure we'll have a couple of rows of people but it'll be done in real time there'll be no editing it'll just be raw um and i think that's kind of what we like to do here on the podcast is just have it raw have our thoughts down our points down if we make a mistake or we say something that you know put our foot in our mouth it's there. Do you know what I mean? There's no minimal think, editing in it. So we kind of have yeah, to be I, like straight so that people are like, you said six months ago this. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, well, I, so. I still think, I still think there are people who don't believe that we record these podcasts in one time. <laughs> I, still, I still think there's a subsection out there where they think they must edit all of this. There must be, there must be things that they cut out all the yeah, time. Man. We no, cut out all the, are, the, the blooper reels. These are all straight shots. These yeah, are. There's no, there's no, there's no fuss. Cause we, and I'll be honest, Neither one of us had the time to sit there and edit this. No. To be absolutely honest. But, no, we wouldn't. You know, looking at the topics. But I think that's the thing, man. Like, we have the topics, like, of, we have to be very, I, th I think straight down the line is that, like, I don't always agree with you. You don't always agree with me. But it's like, we do have receipts of, well, I said this six months ago and I'm still saying it. Like, the game has huge issues, but I'm enjoying it. Or, in your case, the game has huge issues and I just need a break from it. Then I come back, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for an update. So it's not like we're, you know, we're not like kind of going to different sides of the court every time and changing our yeah, opinions on it. I think, I think, I think a little bit for, for me at the moment, uh, and this probably more so comes in with the fact that I'm now back involved within the Football Championship Pro. I think uh, there is a part of me that looks at it and maybe says as a content creator and as a streamer and even as a player of eFootball, that maybe there's an argument to suggest that playing too much of it is of a detriment now. Yeah, like I, agree. I, I heard, I've heard you got, I've heard many streamers say before. Do you know what? I only play an hour or two, or we only play when I'm live, or I only play at these certain times. And I can kind of see where they where they are with it in that sense because mm -hmm. 
would you get past, I would say, maybe two and a half hours, maybe three hours in one sitting? Yeah. It kind of then gets on top of you. Like, the first couple of times something doesn't go quite right, you can be like, oh, God, e-football, you little scamp. <laughs> and then by the end of it, you go in, I want to shake this game. To <laughs> like, why? And then you just get to a point there where you don't really, you don't enjoy it. Yeah. And I think, I think that's where I am at the moment. Like, I'm trying to... I, I do get back into the game through different points of con uh, content that mm. there are. Um, certainly, obviously, from a from a, from a from an esport perspective, yeah. the new types of cards that have come out that are from the Football Championship Pro, it helps me from a research standpoint for me to go. Actually, this is where these players might start to use these cards for future match days. This is where Monaco might use uh, a boosted up for Fana, or that you know, the, there's yeah. different players and mechanisms that you can look at. So from a research standpoint, I, I can understand also where people are kind of opening packs because it's the content that drives them, i.e. if you're doing player reviews or if you're doing here's how I would train them, those types of things. I can understand that where people are kind of are going with their content. My one or my content is specifically going to be more towards the, the esports stuff. And I know that some people may not necessarily like that because they think, well, actually... Uh, all the esport players are just playing meta formations and that's it and it's like well there is a little bit more science to it than just oh well we stick a 4-3-3 in there and it doesn't matter what players play yeah we'll make it work there, there are little nuances that you have to kind of pick up on yeah um I agree. but certainly the way that the game if you pardon the pun has evolved it's now down that kind of it's kind of now down that street of fortnite -y type in the sense of it's different card designs. It's oh look, this player has a mask. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this player has a different hairdo. Like <laughs> Neymar. This is all. This is this different type of player. Here's the, here's a different dynamic image. Messi. Yeah. Like there's all of these. That seems to be the way it's kind of now geared towards. Even the skills the manager they brought in is that's yeah. a huge talking point in itself. You know, players yeah, having specific. Yeah phenomenal finishing skills and fortress and and all of that kind of stuff and again you know you can get into the ethics of putting different player skills behind a paywall i mean again not to yeah. to to about it but we've gone at length in terms of paywall mechanics within video games for the, yeah the, it what feels like the last couple of years to be honest through this podcast it, it does, feels man. like i've aged it does aged with we that, have aged man we have aged since we yeah. started doing this podcast like it's it's mad to think so much has changed like we've gone yeah. from you know planning pretty much with a team of 30 40 people planning for launch like planning edit mode planning master league planning content to have out for day one or whatever yeah to now yeah. being a thing of like you know a lot of the lads have moved on they're kind of waiting in the in, in in the wings to kind of come back and see where edit mode is at in a couple of months time or with the new eFootball 24 or whatever it is um i think as well man though like the biggest the biggest thing and me and you actually talked about this before we came on the podcast we were talking like or whatever as we we sometimes you know do. as we do for sound levels yeah um and we were kind of saying like just the thing that has stood out to me right since i've like i like it's 12 months since i made my to the day i think to, since i did my first video back on the youtube channel right yeah um and i kind of made the decision like right well edit mode isn't going to be there do I still want to kind of, you know, be in the community in, in the way that I was and try and grow something differently? And my first, like, original kind of love was content creation. That's what I started off with, yeah. with the Midnight Kids moniker. Um, You know, me basically just being raw, like, shouting at the game, like, pure, like, if I'm, yeah. if I'm losing the head, I'm losing the head. Like, if I'm happy out, I'm happy out. And I think I haven't enjoyed content creation as much as I ever, as I have since, like, MLO days, right? But yeah. then on the flip side of it, it's like the community has changed so much. Like the game has changed so much that you can't even compare. I don't think you can't even compare eFootball to Pez now. Like there is just no comparison to it. Yeah. And that's just my I opinion. Think, yeah. Yeah. I think I, I do kind of agree in the sense of I, I feel as though the community has kind of become a little bit more kind of pack centric. Yeah. If, if that is even a term where people are happier to sit there and watch people, you know, spin and open agents and, you know, in the hope that they get something, you know, decent or the hope they get the new uh, big time or the new epic yeah. or, or whatever the case may be. And it's, it's slowly becoming less about the game itself, mm. which it's a strange thing to say when for so many years, the strength of Pro Evo or eFootball 
was that it was the better gameplay of a game than yeah its competitors. competitors yeah so now it's kind of it's almost like they're kind of almost blurring the lines between the two so you've kind of gone it's no longer really about the gameplay now it's now all about cards it's now all about the aesthetics rather than rather than the actual game itself but then you could potentially argue that the aesthetics haven't even caught up with yeah. its competitor you know and and obviously we've got you know there's different news about ufl that's now coming out or at least that they're, they're starting to tease the fact that they've got gameplay stuff that's now coming and there's yeah. teaser trackers and all the rest of it but you know if anything to, is to teach us from what we've seen already within Konami circles is is that you wouldn't trust a teaser trailer if it was put in front of your face no because we just wouldn't you know it's so all cgi'd kind of, like in well so you kind of know created. you kind of know it you're kind of now at the point now where you go ignore all the noise about what it looks like in pre-alpha and alpha and yeah is our net physics for goals and all the rest <laughs> of it get me a completed game that runs get yeah. me a complete game you know we even saw it with the likes of undisputed a completely different genre but game was in beta for a while now got released to pc it doesn't really work yeah. the same as it, it always as happens it, man. it always happens that way. yeah so as a result then you just kind of look at it you go okay well i'll just wait for it to come out and then i'll make my yeah make my judgment calls on it because of course when it comes to gaming and when it comes to video games and especially for sports games there are people who want to be first past the post they want to be the ones that set it early enough that they've committed to it but there's enough people in this community now who pivot dependent on which way it goes i would much rather sit here and be like the let's wait and see let's wait and see what happens type of guy mm. because i don't want to be the guy that pivots just because of which way the wind's blowing yeah yeah and it is a difficult one because at the end of the day like as you get older you know we are getting older as i can say it again <laughs> as you get older like time is more pre like it is more valuable to you like time yeah. is definitely the most like valuable thing that i kind of like have there um in my life of like where i want to spend my time and that's why a large part of what i'm kind of enjoying at the moment is interaction like it's not actually the game it's the game is just kind of like a conduit for interacting with people reminiscing on like pez titles reminiscing on players having to crack you know, like people trolling in the, in the chat and you trying to troll them back and messing. Um, because I do think, yeah, I do think it is slightly probably like simplified to say that, you know, you touched on a brilliant point there, Wes, and it's something that we probably predicted was going to happen when the free-to-play model, like the biggest problem I think with any free-to-play game is balance. And it's like, you have to be able to balance the game for somebody that downloads the game like tomorrow compared to somebody yeah. that has been playing it like me for the last year or year and a half or two years because yeah. the thing that happens is is that if you've got no entry point into a free-to-play game you're going to download it get smashed for a week and then that's it and you're not going to part yeah, with yeah. any disposable income that you have for that you know for those people that are downloading free-to-play games they're not going out like I've, I've often made the point right they're not going out to to the shop and going to GameStop and going to, you know, wherever they get their games yeah, and yeah. buying six, seven games a year. They're buying yeah. one game and then they're pumping money into it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, FIFA yeah, guys yeah. will buy and spend 300 quid over the year on yeah. coins or packs or whatever. Um, So I do think that that's probably the biggest problem that I think they've struggled the most with because I've said like hundreds of times, like the first 25 hours of eFootball, if you start today or you started six months ago are brilliant like getting young players into your squad and then slowly but surely as you get to that second layer of the proverbial onion you're realizing hmm i actually don't need to play this game for 20 hours and grind gp i can just spin 100 coins and get a 94 yeah. rated neymar or yeah. and i think that's the balance that they've really struggled with and i think they've and, pushed and so many mention, yeah i was gonna say not to mention you you talk about player comparisons there's comparisons that i've seen where people go actually this the, the the special version they put out is actually no better than the gp version yeah they've gone out so of their way like, to balance the cards like and the cards are brilliantly balanced it's just that you kind of get nearly overwhelmed with the amount of overpowered players that you are forced to play that division one push to division one there's no real filters like we spoke about this before like yeah, something yeah, that yeah. you're a big fan of playing with you know like most of aston villa players are only like you know two three star players hey, so. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. But like, you know what I mean? Is like, there yeah, is no exactly real benefit to you playing somebody like a Douglas Louise in midfield if you have yeah. Vieira sitting there in the wings. Yeah, you might do it yeah, for content yeah. and you might do it yeah. for this. But 
that's kind of I think the problem, like yeah, with you're not the game style points. You're not winning style. Yeah, like bless his heart. I know that Baxter listens to this 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 podcast, but like bless his heart. Like you're not getting style points for playing with the Wales team. Like, but I, <laughs> like, I rate him highly. He's coming for you now. Baxter's coming for you. No, no, no. I say it with great <laughs> reverence and much respect. But it, my point is, is that because the filtering system isn't there, that attachment to your squad is now. It's kind of null and it's kind yeah. of almost null and yeah. void because uh, again I, I've been doing a little bit of casting for 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 different tournaments and when I look at the standard or look at the players that are being used, the squads are almost identical and yeah. I'm talking as in down to like the special cards that are yeah. being used. They are almost identical. That's not the eFootball Championship Pro, yeah, 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 yeah. That, but the play the players themselves are so like in terms of it's Neymar, it's Vieira, it's Beckenbauer, it's like Puyol, it's literally like the highest of high players that yeah. they can use. But they're all relatively the same lineup. Yeah. So obviously from a casting point of view, it's a bit like, well, there's only so many times I can go, well, there's Neymar, oh, there's the <laughs> other Neymar who's just put the ball back. Yeah, but I, the, the Neymar. point becomes the, the point that I was trying to make was the specialness has kind of gone away from that attachment yeah. you could do. You know, we've seen it before where people use like the default squads to run to Division One. You don't get anything better for doing that. Like, yeah. Yes, no, there's no, yeah, there's awesome. no benefit. Don't get me wrong. You'll show off that you're awesome. Yeah. But there's no there's no attachment to doing that anymore. Like yeah. it's the same. Like you said, that you know, I could have a team full of Aston Villa players and max them out. But the reality is, is that in a matchup, they're not going to be the same as like you said, a Vieira or an icon or a legend or a yeah. feature player. Because that's just that's the way that the game is engineered now. The game yeah. is engineered now to the point where, as we said, you know, yes, it's great that people have these ideas and have these identities of their teams, but the reality is you're not winning style points for for getting up there, and yeah. you don't get anything over and above for doing that. With the old filtering system, it was a case of well, well, actually, when you got to a certain level, or if you if you were doing it against people's ratings. You'd get more of a ratings boost if you used a lower level team against. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've kind of taken that away in a sense, and now you're all kind of left with this: is just get your best teams out on the tables, boys, and just go for it. Yeah. Like, that's well, it is dream it. team, I suppose. <laughs> it is. It is dream team, but there's no, <laughs> to put it there kindly, there's no dream within it because yeah. all the teams are relatively the same. There's Romario. There's Mbappe. There's Messi. Um, there's what? Who else you got? What? Ronaldinho. Yeah. Basically, all of the players that you could think of, you could probably list off your eleven now, and yeah, I imagine the comments that is section here would be able to list off all the players that you've got in there, and the yeah. probably actually. Oh yeah, but if you look at the top, of the 11, if you even go in, and I often do it, like if people are asking, like what's you know meta or what's overpowered at the moment, like it's the same it's the same thing and you yeah. know this from commentating and stuff as well it's the same thing every time it's like you've three central strikers two ss's and a cf you've three center backs and it's usually the same rotation of maybe five players which is yeah. you know as you said mbappe messi neymar up front uh you know romanegi or else romario and then you know you don't have your Lewandowski's, you don't have your benzmas you don't have top class players in real life that would make any squad you know, you yeah. are sticking to players that you know are tried and tested. And to me, I don't have a massive problem with the, I won't say like the lack of originality in squads. I think what the biggest thing is, is that like, and we we talked about it, it's kind of in a roundabout way. Our first topic is like the eFootball journey of where the game has come from and when the game released. And then the journey you go on as a player, it's not as... I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to say. It's like it's like I haven't enjoyed e football, one v one, like playing one v one experience gameplay wise. I'd say since uh, this much, like this is the best I've enjoyed since probably Pez eighteen, where I actually felt, a lot of the time when I was making mistakes. Yeah, if I got screwed every now and again with the game or the connection, fine. But the majority of the time, if I lost the game, it's you know yeah. GG's. That guy had me on the ropes, or else that guy got lucky we move on to the next one and there's no real frustration there unless the connection is bad or else I'm playing horrible yeah. and blaming the game, right? Which yeah. I'm prone to do. But yeah. I do think that the, the same can be said depending on like how you play the game. And I think that that journey of going from struggling to win games to being able to hold your own to being able to get up to Division 1 is like narrowed because 
you're so pushed to get in a beastly squad, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Because then, yeah, because you are kind of almost, because of the, the way that the matchup systems work and because of the way the matchmaking works, mm. you are kind of pigeonholed to go, oh, okay, you you need these players. Like yeah. I remember vividly when Romario first came out, like ages ago, and I remember even having, like, I've never had that vibe with a player to go, like, I absolutely need him. <laughs> the amount of times I was getting smoked by Romario, I was just like... Yeah, he's a different class, man. Yeah, okay. I actually need this card. Like, I need it. Like, and I ne I've never been in that with any with any football game. Have I sat there and gone, I need a card. But that mm. there was an example of, yeah, you get smoked enough by Romario, you're going to want that card. But it's not even, the thing is, man, like, what's really confused me more so, right, is I would say Romario, Vieira, and probably Beckenbauer, I would say, are the three, like, they're just in a completely different level to themselves because they're, they're, they're paid to, you know, they're, they're basically paid, not paid to win, but they're paid to be the best players on any starting eleven, right? But yeah. then they've kind of gone the opposite way with, they give you a free version of Mbappe that goes to a level 98 overall, and it's like... You don't need to pay anything for him. You can just train up your Mbappe to have similar stats. He mightn't have 98 overall on him, but he's like 94 overall. But he's still got yeah. 90 finishing, 90 pace, 90 offensive yeah, awareness. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, they've really made it that I thought that they'd push. It's like they haven't needed to push the players that you spend coins on more. Because I think if you like give a person a standard version of a card or a shiny version of the same card with a couple of different attributes that may or may not be making the difference. Visually, yeah, yeah, it might yeah. be 94 pace compared to 92 pace, but is it really going to win you a game? Is it really yeah. going to win is you it, promotion? Is it really, yeah, is it really going to beat that extra yard of pace? Yeah, is it like? Probably but not. But you would you would argue to say then, so let, let's put it in, in a perspective of this then, So because you'll know this better than I will because you've spent more time playing the game. Mm. Do you think it's, and I know this isn't exactly a topic that we were going to cover. Yeah, yeah. But is it a case of that it's better to be a RTG style club at the moment mm. than it is to actually stick stick money into the game. Oh, definitely, man. Because if, because if you're getting freebies, mm. why would you? Especially, and again, I know that the running meme at one point was, uh, you get more apology GP out of Konami than you did actual <laughs> game. But it's like if you're getting those apologies and you're getting all of those things, is it better for you to just sit there and wait for a campaign to go? Oh, if you log in for five days, you get a free thing. Yeah, like, I think so, man. Like, I, I think there's like, no, like, there is, I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely could not see why people would be spending money on the cards, apart from the guys I said before. Like, if, like, if they, it's it's like anything, man. It's like perspective, right? Romario was a game changer for me, and I think Vieira. I got the two of those with the veteran bonuses day one, right? And they literally yeah. carried me up to Division 1 two or three times, right? But in terms of the players that they're releasing now, like you are going, going to be like every month, right? When the match pass resets, you get a free mat, a free five-star match pass reward, right? That can get you like a 96 rated, you know, Chua Mene this week. You had Enzo Fernandez there for Chelsea, Ramos, like all top class players that are like 94 plus rated, right? If you train them right. Yeah. Yeah. So like I genuinely don't, I think a lot of people are actually building their teams and I do think that you don't need to, you know, the, the free to play is like super, super enjoyable to do. And, you know, you can get your free coins, you get your login bonuses, you play the two events every week, you get 100 coins every week, that's 400 a month. That means you can open and clear the player of the week tour or player of the week every month. There's a lot of stuff on it that I'm actually even surprised that they've balanced it so much because I don't know any other free to play game, Warzone, Fortnite, that give you so much as eFootball does. Like, yeah, because I think, because I think for, for me, that for, for, for somebody who had my perspective on it, I was very much a kind of the, like, I, I was the guy that would probably rally against microtransactions mm. in a sense. But there's now, as you said, there appears to have been that slight shift. It's not, they're not going to give you, you know, they're not going to give you a box that you can just open with GP. Yeah. Like they're, ne like, they're never going back to that model, no matter how much we scream for it because the reality is is that because Konami are data driven their data would suggest that people don't care realistically because the 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 pot of players that they're attracting aren't the pot of players who are wanting this stuff to happen they're they're a, they're going for the new newer generation mm. of gamers 
and you know, let's call it what it is. You know, I think I saw a, a, a breakdown from I think it was eFootballer. I think, uh, pardon me if I've got his name incorrect. Yeah, yeah, the French guy. But there was there was a there was a pie there was a pie chart of players that were involved in the eFootball Open. I think it was just from Europe. Is that ninety percent of the players that were or something? There was a crazy. Yeah, I remember something it. about it. And it's like it's a crazy majority of it are all mobile. Yeah. And oh, and mobile is king, man. I mean, that's. And I think. Their numbers, and I think it's right? gonna. It's you know. I think it's gonna be the way that. I think it's gonna be the way that the game moves in the future. I yeah. Really do, because again, it would be. It would be borderline ignorant if you had, as you've made your your hamburger analogy, God knows how many times on this podcast. I like burgers. It would be, it would be, it would be, it would be ignorant of them to ignore that fan base when they're the ones who are playing the game the most. Yeah, but that, I agree. I think know, the thing is, like, that, that... whether that's a detriment because whether that's a detriment because there isn't any offline modes. Within yeah, if it on, con- on console, I'm I think that's what's put off a lot of this. console players at the moment. Mm. But then, as you said, on that point, man, is that like people ask me the whole time, like I get like a lot of regulars would come back and they'd watch content and they're like, oh, another version of Mbappe, another version of Neymar. You know, like we're getting Cristiano Ronaldo player of the week tomorrow or player of the month tomorrow, whatever it is. Right. And it's like, oh, this has been a six, seven edition. It's not the six, seven edition for somebody that's downloading the game today. Correct. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So we're looking at that. Once you have that adjustment, once you have that adjustment in perspective, that you go actually well there's going to be some poor soul tomorrow who may have seen the the graphic of uh, potentially ronaldo on a thursday and gone i might give that a download tomorrow yeah. and they may have absolutely nobody so to the people <clears throat> who've been playing it since it got released yes it's going to be like the sixth seventh version but as you said to the person who is logging in for the first time or mm-hmm. hasn't played eFootball since it launched yeah it's going to be their first opportunity exactly which, it's a weird one to get your head around and the more you've kind of said it to me the more i kind of go actually i had actually never thought about it like that yeah. as in the sense of well actually there's going to be some brand new person tomorrow who's going to download it for the first time and have that opportunity yeah and you can kind of understand now where you sometimes see angry gamers on twitter go well i've been playing this since it first came out what am i losing to a guy who's got the <laughs> default squad and ronaldo this is <laughs> like and it's like you can kind of understand why people get a little bit angry yeah <laughs> Well, you have to have a, as I said, you have to have a launch pad into free to play games every month. Like yeah. there has to be like a reset of an entry point into it or else, you know, like if I went on and I played somebody that has sunk a thousand hours into League of Legends, right? Where there's actually strategy, yeah. skill, whatever. Like I'm not even going to be able to scratch the surface after a weekend of heavy playing of like the just the amount of sheer like knowledge he has about the game. It's like anything. Yeah. I do think though, and it's a nice segue onto another topic. I do think the current state of the gameplay then when you take it onto the pitch compared to management off the pitch and cards and all that, like I do think that that needs to, how would I say it? Like I think that there's a lot of pressure on V2.5 to get stuff right that I've even noticed myself that has kind of crept into the gameplay to make it a more balanced gameplay because on the final point, I would say about the cards and stuff, and like this is obviously and a difference of opinion with different people that you ask. I would say that a lot of the cards that I'm seeing now releasing, they're kind of because I played the game for so long. You kind of know how the players are going to be without even yeah. seeing them. It's like I know Ronaldo's limitations. No matter what card they release tomorrow, yeah, I know yeah, Ronaldo yeah. will be very similar to a previous card that they've released. And he might have a new celebration, or he might have something. He probably won't, but he could have. Um, yeah, and that's and that's and I suppose surprise. That's the gamble that yeah the, the consumer will take. So go. Oh, I wonder if he has his line back celebration. Yeah. I wonder, if, I wonder if they've brought his sue back, like and all these other like things. But again, as we said, that's that's where the the characteristics are, are going right now for mm. what people what people are concerned about necessarily from a gameplay standpoint, that's what people are concerned about. They're not, yeah. they're, yes, you, you still have your issues with defending. You still have your issues with, with lock ons. You still have your issues with, uh, um, being an overpowered mechanic. Within yeah. The game. The auto you still defending, have man. a lot of, you still have a lot of foibles within the game. Like I played a couple of games the other day, goalkeepers, just not even really diving for a ball. Yeah. When they get a shot taken past them. Like there's still some very kind of dicey Dicky stuff. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's just it's just it's not quite there. But as we, 
again, as we'll probably talk more so about expectations of the next update, mm. if we take it on what has happened within the history of, of eFootball, just eFootball as yeah. well, in their efforts to try and get stuff right, they have often undone stuff that they've already got right. Yeah. So, you I know, agree with that, yeah. you might end up with a, a better paced version of the game, but the game might be slightly less responsive in terms of in your hands. Yeah. Because I think what people may be mistook for, because I saw a lot of people say, oh, but it's far too quick now. It's this, it's that, it's the other. It's not, it's not a thinking person's game anymore. It's like, yeah, but the, the game is responsive online. Yeah, you it, is, it is, it so, is. You've been so used to a game that doesn't respond when you hit buttons and doesn't really, you know, takes an extra touch and takes an extra touch to do something because you've been so not used to it, when it then gets made to be responsive, all of a sudden the reaction is, is oh, it's too quick. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 that's how a responsive game's meant to work. Yep. And also, you're playing with overpowered superstars. Of course it's going to be quick because they all have stupid stats. Yeah, so, <laughs> so of yeah the stats are very have... unbalanced. So for me, it's like a, a case of, I hope they don't take the responsiveness away with 2.5 yeah. because I think the responsiveness is exactly what the game needed. Yeah. Because there are times where I would be looking at games where people would just be like, I've pressed that button three times and it's only just done it. Mm. You know, and it, and there's things like that. I, I hope that you don't undo it. And and as for people saying, oh, well, will 2.5 give us Master League and Edit Mode? No. No, it man. It it, 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 it's, it's, it's not there. It's the, the way I would look at it is, is at this point, I, I, you know, my own personal opinion is I don't think they're ever going to come, but that's yeah. just in my head. That's my head and that's yeah. my convincing because that's how I make peace with the fact that it's not here yet. So it's never gonna get <laughs> that's here. your coping mechanism. Then, yeah, it's my coping mechanism. But then once it does get here, I'll be like, oh, fantastic. Yeah. But in my head right now, whatever's not there is not there. I can't. Yeah. No, can't I agree, expect. man. You can't affect what's not there. And I think I think they will. I think they, I think they are a priority. I think it depends on. I think it depends on how other stuff is kind of I think the I think the biggest thing and we'll talk about this again as we as we kind of go towards the the end of the podcast but I think the transition is going to be the biggest thing of how they transition there's a lot of unanswered questions how they're going to yeah. transition over to eFootball 24 and I uh, the thing they kind of like I, I I'll give props where props are due as much as I as much as I can right because I spend a lot of time playing the game interacting with people we do a podcast on it. We're spending time doing it. So there yeah, must be yeah. some sort of, you know, even with you with the commentary, Wes, yeah, yeah, there is an enjoyment level there that yeah, you can't absolutely. just pick up from going to a new, like Rocket League or League yeah. of Legends or something. There that's, is that nostalgic kind of tie yeah. that's there that is hard yeah, for yeah. people to understand. Because some people that I interact it. with, man, have never heard of Edit Mode or Master League. They don't actually know. There's it's some crazy. people... It, and that blows my mind. Yeah. That absolutely yeah. blows my mind. But I, I've said it before when I come away from, from casting and when I come away from events, first thing I want to do when I get home is follow up the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Swear yeah. To God, I swear to God, I walk away from every event going, I could do this, you know. Yeah, I, I could, could do that. I could be that guy again. <laughs> and, then, and, then I get my, and then I get my ass handed to me by Ramara and I go, I'm not that guy. Anymore. It's not that guy. I'm not that yeah. guy. But, um, I know, but it, is, yeah. no, but it is, man, because they've balanced the hook. game in, a, in such a good way in ways but then i think the gameplay like they've balanced the game in terms of like you have a brilliant entry point to come in that you can buy players with money if you want if you're lucky enough to be able to afford to buy players the same way as if you're lucky enough to be able to go out and buy you know what i mean a steak for your dinner rather than like i don't know like a, a tin of it's beans dis like it's just, yeah it's disposable exactly it's disposable. you have you you set your own boundaries on what you're comfortable spending in online right no matter yeah, what it is absolutely. you know like clothes whatever right that's a completely separate thing right but i think they've balanced that really well that you don't need to get like a 94 rated version of mbappe for 100 coins when you can go into the gp market and get one for free um yeah you know is, i think they've balanced that would, excellently yeah. but the gameplay yeah. then was is something that has kind of probably initially turned you away um in terms of like there was just nothing really to play there. Like in terms of yeah. gameplay, nothing to play for. As in, right, I win another match. Brilliant. I'm going up to Division 2. Brilliant. What? Like, what now? Like, oh, Division yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, yeah. like, and then the content of like, away from the gameplay playing one more, there's kind of a, 
do I really need to grind for this version of this card? Do I really need to pass this match pass and play 100 games or 50 games? Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of, I think, the thing that they haven't balanced. The management side of the game, building a squad, the free-to-play versus buy-to-play or credit card FC, as somebody says. Um, <laughs> that is, I think myself, and I'll probably get inflamed, but I think that's very balanced, as in you don't need the players, like the iconic moment version players in PES 2021, man were ridiculously yeah. overpowered compared to the standard cards. Yeah. Um, well, but you, you guys, you guys, and I say you guys with, with great respect as well, and by you guys, I mean content creators have done a really good job of also informing community of going, mm. hey, actually, you don't need Griezmann who's got pink hair because the Griezmann that's there, actually, you can get him off the GP market yeah. and he's just as good. And then it, I suppose then it becomes a question of, do you want to and actually yeah actually that is probably the better way to actually god you're actually awakening me on this podcast. <laughs> you actually made me change my my dynamic somewhat so now it then becomes a case of if you want to put money in to get the 94 rated but let's just call it griezmann yeah 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 you, you can put 100 coins in to get a 94 rated griezmann that you can't train up or you can choose to grind the gp get griezmann and then grind his levels up yep. with training items or whatever yeah. Actually, yeah, that is kind of... It's time know, versus I money, think, man. That's I, I that's what it is. That. Yeah. I hate to say that. I to get that. I've got to give him props. I've yeah. got to give him props. There. That is actually... Yeah, that, that's it. That is, I, I'm sorry. He's caught me, folks. For once, for once he's caught me with a right hook. <laughs> the haymaker. No, but that's, that's what it is. You've hit the nail on the head. Like, there is... Obviously, there is differences in... The one big thing with the icons is the B. They're set to B, like, do you know, they're on yeah, B rating yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have 90 team play style. All the special edition of the cards now are on 90 yeah. team play style, so they fit in any squad, right? But apart from that, like, you're 100% correct, is that, like, there was, like, a player released. Who did they release the other day? I think it was, like, one of the players yeah, released. Was, but his like standard card change, was actually right? better than the, the premium card. Like, his standard yeah. card was better across all... I can't think who it was actually. I want to. There's certainly some players that fall into that category with the the e football championship pro. Oh, definitely. Is yeah. There are some. Is that there are some players? I think Jekko is one of them. Where it's like there are certain, like if you maxed out the regular version of Jekko or a, I think there's also another featured version of Jekko floating around somewhere. Oh, there's a few. But yeah. If you, but if you maxed out the Jekko, uh, or one of them, like the stats when you run a comparison side by side. It's like there are some stats that are worse in the mm -hmm. new one, but yeah. some stats are better. Yeah. But when I was analysing it, I was looking at it going, yeah, but his heading's like minus eight compared to his old card. Yeah. I, 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 great, it's respect to Ed and Jekko. He's not known for footwork. He's known <laughs> for heading. He's known for aerial ability. So why would you then part money to go and get a version of a card that has less of what the card is good at? Yeah than the one that's already there but because man it's 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 the optics of it it's the visual it's it's yeah. it's the form those cars those yeah. cars look amazing yeah that, that for once when you look at it and you go there's like that shock of like pink it's yeah. like in those card designs they actually do look quite nice no, i like, do yeah they've they do, do done a nice. good job with them but it's it for, for me i suppose it then becomes it, it's it's down to the player it's down to, and as you said it's it's time it's that time <laughs> It's that time-tested argument of time versus money. Mm -hmm. If you've got the time, you can put the time in. You can have the same players. If you've got the money, you can put the money in. It, it, it kind of then works out. Yeah. So I think, I think yeah, I think looking at the things that they are doing right, I think some quality of life changes that I've noticed, obviously, when they start to put the squad lists in, mm. that was heavily... You can rename out. the squads and delete them. And you can rename out. the squads, you can delete them, you can do what you need to do, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great from a, from a sorting out list. I think if they went one step further, like I said, if they went one step further, they did their filter system. Obviously, co-op would be a really good, a really good thing to bring oh, in at man. some point. Co-op would be at unreal. Some point, at some point, because I think that that would just kind of really give it a shot in the arm. Yeah, really I think co-op is definitely a massive priority for them, like because I think it would just, you know, it would just turn the game on its head, like in terms of yeah. building squads, like that you could you could set up, you know, you could set up tournaments where it was 3v3 and you could have like completely unique teams because you'd be bringing in three squads worth of players into a starting 11 and a bench yeah. do you know so like i actually in in one part of me right i like i i can't wait for co-op but the other part of me is kind of scared of like <laughs> i don't know where i'm going to get the extra time out of something's going to have to yeah, give yeah. because yeah i played 600 plus hours of co-op on pez 21 
Yeah. Like I was literally like a fiend. Think, like you know, are you on yeah. co-op tonight? Anyone? Can yeah, I join yeah, this? Can I, like I just I think, loved it. Like, and I think I think because of because of the way that the game is at the moment, i.e., with all of these special cards and all these different things. Again, if you're thinking cynic, well, if you think of it like it cynically from a Konami point of view, if you're then starting to play with cards that you don't yet own, for example, if they're out of the special card bin or or nominating contracts or whatever. You can then try them out from somebody else's squad. Go, oh, actually, I quite like this card. Okay, well, I'll go and do, you know, I'll go and put some coins in mm. or, or whatever to try and get it. Yeah. Like, again, and, and <clears throat> I hate to sound like the cynic, but that that's kind of where I am with it, is that I always try and put myself in the in the realms of business of it because... Yeah. Well, that's because what it is, reality, really, isn't in the it? Reality, in the reality, that's how, that's how the decision makers are looking at it. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, game makers or, or video game makers will do stuff by accident that will benefit their communities. They don't do it with full thought. <laughs> they do it by accident. Yeah. You know, if it somehow improve, improves the state of the community, they get applauded. It's like fantastic, great scenes. If they don't do it well, then it's a problem. Like, for example, um, uh, 2K, when they took a step away from uh, WWE, mm. where they went, we're not going to do a 2021. They kind of did a Konami a little bit. Yeah. They went, we're not, that time. Out a 20, we're not putting out a 2021. We're going to put all of our resources into 2022. 2023 of WWE just came out and is now lauded by everybody because mm. it's really, really good. The and full package. Works. like. And yeah. yeah. So so when 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 companies do it well, <laughs> they, they are, you know, they're lauded for it. Yeah. I think had the execution of it been better by Konami, we would probably have that same reference to eFootball because had it have come out in the state that the expectations were set at, we would have it would have been lauded by everybody. I, I genuinely I think, believe that. It's I, just because I agree. whatever happened, whatever happened, happened. And and I say that because you know, as I've said before, we'll never know. But whatever happened, happened and we got what we got. And yeah. I think that's where it kind of that's where it kind of soiled itself with the community a little bit. Yeah. Is that it kind of became the oh, it's just no, no, and no, which is essentially what the reaction. Was I think before. I think that's a brilliant point because it, like it's something it's something that I've often thought about as well. I think I've said it on the podcast before, like that. I think as a as a as a football game, right? As a football game, as as the start of the e football franchise, like as just judging it on e football. I yeah. think it's a brilliant start in terms of a 1v1 experience. Like, obviously, there's no other modes for an online free-to-play game. I think it's a great start for the eFootball franchise. And if people are looking at it like that, I think they're reasonably happy with the game. They'll dip in and dip out whenever a new patch is up. They'll open a few packs. Judging it as a as eFootball, also known as a continuation on of the Pez franchise, it's been a, it's been a disappointment. And then yeah. I often have thought that... UFL are kind of like, you know, there are goals or whatever they are, those games. They're kind of showing gameplay clips now and they're showing like pre-rendered stuff and they're showing graphics and they're talking about fictional players and all this. And it's like, I reckon if, you know, UFL had released what we currently have with eFootball, right? If UFL, like, let's just say Konami were still working away and they were going to wait till, you know, Unreal Engine 5, right? I think you UFL or goals would kill for what eFootball is at the moment, even with all the issues. Because I think to break down that barrier of going from a planned free-to-play game to a successful free-to-play game, right, across yeah. multiple platforms, whether it's mobile... Look, mobile money is as good as... If somebody's buying cards on mobile, yeah, yeah, it's as good yeah. as Steam. Yeah. It's irrelevant Absolutely. to Konami, right? So that's yeah, up to yeah. us then to decide whether we want to support it if we don't think that the PS5 version is a PS5-worthy uh, game to play, right? But I do think that that's kind of the two sides of the coin of that. It's impossible if you've played Pez and you've grown up with the Pez franchise. It's impossible to look at this as a brand new entry into the title. That's why yeah. I still call it Pez 23 sometimes. I still yeah, say yeah, Pez. Yeah. I still look at it think, as no yeah. Master League. And it's like, d d there never was a Master League. Called, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, and I think that's that's kind of... That, that obviously that fault lies on Konami. You know, we talk. Oh, about it does. Things. Yeah, the, the, we, we talk about what things the need marketing. to change. The the reality needs to be is that there, there needed to have been more of a gap between the two. There needed to be some lines of demarcation where they went. Pez ceases to exist. 
okay, we're going to start off a brand new franchise. It's not going to be... We're not going to use any of the, the, the slogans that we used yeah, from... Yeah, the assets, anything. From pairs, we don't use the assets, we don't use anything. It should have been a completely clean break. Mm. The reality, of course, was is that it isn't, and we're still, you know, we're still seeing references to Master League and edit mode from from Konami's, you know, from the from the from the eFootball account. So yeah, it, it, which it is smart. Was, which it is smart it, because they want to bring over that older group of players and say, when the Master is. League does come, they already have a ready-made built-in. Fan, fan fan base for co-op for edit mode for yeah, mass league it, it is it's smart in one regard but then it's also i don't use the word risky speed, but yeah it's no it's risky. risky it's risky yeah it's, it's risky because if you don't don't deliver something that is of that ilk which they haven't in any so far which they haven't at this mm. point you're just going to get a whole player base that's going to go oh we ain't playing this we ain't yeah. playing this until this comes out that's why you know most of the comments that i see on videos from from uh, play e football are uh, master league edit yep. mode um co-op i see a lot like literally on every tweet every video every single thing and they must be if they're not they must be fully aware of a complete breakdown of the comment sections of each of their things to, to tell them that this is what the, the the people are after yeah the issue obviously as we've said already is is because they are data driven they've got no data to draw off of for the offline if they gave somebody something offline, which they have in some regards, yeah, with they the haven't given anybody, they haven't, but they haven't given anybody anything from a, or oh, here's the league mode, here's the international cup mode, or here's this, or here's like a, here's a, I don't know, here's a trial season mm. of Master League. If they release that as a, well, actually, you get to see a brief insight into how Master League works, and you saw all of that flooding fan yeah. base come over. All of a sudden then, from a Konami standpoint, they have a bunch of data to go, well, actually, people have been playing this season repeatedly. They've been playing it with different teams. They've been doing different signings. They've been doing all of this stuff. Yeah. Then they'd have tangible data to go away with. So you, the only way to get the tangible data is to release the thing. But the problem is, is that they're not in a position to release the thing. Yeah. So I think Yeah, of, I think I think they need to... I think they need, they need to, to smash it. They need like to when offer it something. Out, you know what I mean? And I yeah. think they know that... Yeah, but I, I think, think they, they need, need to, to really something. make it a selling point, especially if, from all looks and you know intentions of where the game is going as a free to play, and you look at every other free to play game that has ever released, right? Like you are, you do eventually go that road. Like I even seen Fortnite there. I've never really played. I've dabbled a bit in Fortnite, but I know you played a bit. Like yeah. they've made it kind of now that, um. You know, it's if you were to ask what Fortnite is to ten different people, it's kind of like a free to play battle royale. But then there's another, there's other modes within the game. Yeah, it's like with Minecraft. The, yeah, you know? versus Save the World. They yeah. have Fortnite, uh, Fortnite Creative. I don't know whether you. Yeah, the new one looks yeah. unreal. That new thing. Yeah. That they released. So it's like yeah. it's about. I think I think Konami know that if they are going to release it and they are going to release Edit Mode and Master League. Sorry, man. I need to turn off this fucking ring. Um. But if they are going to be looking at it like that, that they actually are going to be releasing it and making it a DLC slash microtransaction that it's like, oh, fifteen ninety nine to download, you know, to install Master League, right? Which a lot of yeah. games have done. Then it needs to smash it. Like it can't just yeah, be yeah, yeah. the remnants of Master League on PES 2016 yes. to PES 2021. So yeah, like to me, that kind of brings us on to probably... No, as usual, we've covered a load, but we still have loads <laughs> to talk about. But we'll have, we, we, dance, will, we, we won't leave it as long guys. this we, time. We won't leave did, it as long. We did, offer you, we did offer you a bumper podcast, and, and damn it, we yeah. will deliver. <laughs> but we will move on to kind of the future, right? And I want to ask you kind of a personal question in terms of pure gameplay, right? Or like, I know you're still dabbling and you're doing stuff and obviously the commentary and smashing it, but what would get you like... What would you get get you back in the game and chair of you have a Saturday night there to kill, there's nothing on the telly, you've housed yourself and you're like, I actually can't wait to switch on my PS5 and play. Like, what would you like to see in V2.5? Or even if that's not going to scratch the itch and you don't have the hopes for that, what would you like to see in eFootball 2024? Like, in the future? I think there needs to be, I think for me, I think again as a predominantly online player i think there needs to be a tangible look at the reward system yeah. within eFootball um both from the match pass side of things and also from divisionally because just giving people eFootball points is great in one regard 
at, 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 you know, at the end of each phase. But the reality is, is that the, the amount that you get per phase isn't probably enough for you to get something tangible within the football point store. Mm. Um, I think there needs to be more emphasis on a more variety on the events that come down the pike. Um, you know, the last time I think I entered a, an event, I think it was the where it was like a team limit of under nineteen hundred or something of that ilk. That's right? been a while ago now, yeah. Since yeah, yeah. well, that but that tells you the, mm. the level in which I'm dabbling in because it's like <laughs> it's a couple of months ago, and, yeah. uh, and and that's my reference point because it the rest of the events are just rinse and repeat. Yeah, you know, I'd love there to be a return to the filter system. I think that would be great. Um, I I tell you, you're talking about co-op as a mode. Get your online lobbies back. Yeah, man. Because that new lobby system ain't it. Yeah. It ain't it. The whole, oh, you've got to put an eight digit code in. It's like, no, just allow me to invite people. Yeah. Allow me to just invite people, not share a code with them. Yeah. Um, it's like the Nintendo, and, and day, Nintendo days. You know, friend code. For my, you know, for my 11v11 co op brother, you know, my, my, my 11v11 brothers and sisters, get their mode back as well. Yeah, man. Because. Like I, I know that they're crying out for stuff. I think eleven v eleven would certainly get me back invested. Yeah, at it because Pro club style again, it's something different than yeah. just oh, we're just having to smash like we're just smashing dream team mm. and that's it. Like I'd love there to be a variety there. I'd love there to be like something there that gives us something different. I think the lobbies would introduce that. Co op would certainly introduce it as well. But I think from a reward standpoint as well, give people something tangible to play for. And, you know, that that's where I would look at it. And that's certainly something that I would probably look at and go, yeah, okay, they've, they've made a bit of an effort there and they've, they've given something back to, to the community a bit. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It's great points. I think everyone is kind of singing from the same hymn sheet, like of it's what what would make V2.5 the best. Um, I know that if we're... They came out, if they came out in the morning and went co-op, lobbies but every, like that's coming in 2.5 i think you would see confetti fall from the ceiling yeah it'd be like, huge man you know, bottles of champagne to be popped like both in like ireland and england <laughs> like everybody would just be going ham like it'd be wonderful yeah you know peace would break out you know it'd be like it'd be like you but imagine like even at that i think i think i think one good thing that has come out of e-football is it's made people a lot more like even when we had those options in Pez with my club and it was co-op, there was very little, I, I, how would I say it? There was very little kind of community driven things done. I think yeah. because the game was more featured on Master League and the bigger communities were edit mode Master League, such as ourselves or, you know, any of the guys that do uh, editing or anything like that. It was more focused on that. Whereas I think now, you know, like how epic would it be if we could do a 3v3 co-op tournament where it's like, you know, team Weza versus team, uh, you know, the true Brits or, you know, whoever it is, right? And you're like, you pick your tree, you're canvassing, yeah. you could have the crack about like unveil, unveiling like your like, star signings. Like, and It'd be like you know. football civil war, that's what it'd be. <laughs> Captain, Captain America versus Iron Man. It'd be like Hunger Games. <laughs> it'd be everyone yeah, to be well, fighting actually, over everybody yeah. you know all fighting over me because they would i'd be like Roy keen i'd probably get red carded every game but, <laughs> but no but it would be crack it, it would it be cracked like avenues it opens up avenues and yeah I think, I think that's that's where i think the state of the game is at the moment is because it's so linear to use a better term because there's only that one avenue to go down a lot of people just go oh, if i don't want to play dream team i don't want to play the game yeah it's like You've got to give them something else. Give them co-op. Give us a co-op ladder system. Yeah. Like, and give us co-op rewards. Co-op match pass. Imagine co a co-op co match pass. Yeah, co-op match pass or co-op rewards. But you know, uh, like say eleven v eleven, or just or just the ability to just have lobbies again. Yeah. Because that that is something that is crying out for mm. across the board. If not through co-op, it's definitely being cried out for for 11 v 11 because yeah. I know there's a whole bunch of players, there's a whole bunch of leagues that are probably waiting on that. Oh, definitely. As you said, there's so many people who are sat there dormant at the moment. Yeah. If you're a kit editor, you're dormant. If you're a uh, if you're 11 v 11 player, you're dormant. Yeah. If you are a co-op player, yeah. you're dormant. If you're a master league master player, league. you're dormant. Become a legend. Like. Become a legend, you're dormant. Yep. Like, so that's five, that's five things yep. already that you're just going, not on the table. Yep. 
even if you're in divisions, like, you know, you play normal division matches. Like, yeah, can't even do that. Can't it's even like do that. <laughs> you know? So, like, somebody that doesn't want to build... Like, I know plenty of my friends that would have played and they would literally get maybe two hours a game in a week. That would be it. You yeah. know, they've got kids and, you know, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All, all that stuff. But they've got kids, <laughs> you know, like, they say important stuff, whatever. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> like, they they used to always love... Like, I used to play a lot of co-op with them and they used to always love the, the thing of, like, I would literally have the squad ready for them and then they just jump into the lot like they jump into a party chat with me to play co-op we have the team they're literally just turning up and we're literally talking we're not even worried about what's happening on the screen it's kind of like you know playing a very casual game we, we could be winning five nil or losing five nil and it's just oh how was your week you know how's the missus whatever and it was a very casual thing whereas now yeah. you literally need to be sponsored by you know an antiperspirant company to play divisions in eFootball because it's so sweaty like it's so <laughs> like you'd be literally like like your man in airplane when he's you know he's sweating like yeah, 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 yeah. i love that yeah. meme but like i do think that that casualness has gone and yeah look some people will love that some people want to go on 50 win streaks and you know flex up on twitter and say oh you know i'm the best player ever and they probably are do you know what i mean they're they're beasts at the game but you know for people that can play the game and invest even 10 hours a week into gaming like i know one friend he literally gets he literally gets an hour like he's been playing like he's still on the first last of us like he hasn't finished it because he doesn't have time with kids so yeah. and he works so you know he works a lot so it's like people get, people get responsibilities and they yeah. lose time and yeah and i think and i think i think the i think the other the other point of uh, a casual play and i and i won't and i don't mean that with any disrespect but it's the element of fun yeah and and and, and as kind of almost like a kind of my closing point is and i've said this god knows how many times Gaming is meant to be fun. No, if you're not no. Enjoying... I know, I know, I know. It's a strange concept, <laughs> I know, right? But gaming is supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun playing video games, then you're playing the wrong video yeah, games. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's... For example, I'm babysitting the nieces tomorrow. I know that I've got a <laughs> night full of Hogwarts Legacy that I've got to play <laughs> because the, the niece is absolutely obsessed Addictive. with Harry Potter, right? Yeah. But fundamentally, as I said to you before we started playing the pod, thanks to Chales and This Is Football Game and whilst I'm here, I've now got a copy of Championship Manager 0102 to go and play. Like, and that's a deep hole you're going to go down, I'm telling and you. That, and that's a deep, that's a deep, I deep did that hole two years, during I COVID, like I was just, oh, I uh, how I got I'm out. I'm sorry, I still can't get on with the fact that Villa had Hassan Cashlow and <laughs> Mustafa Haji in the same <laughs> midfield because, and, and, and Oiving Leonardson. Like, and again, <laughs> Most of our viewers, they'll be like, who in God's name are those players? And I'll be like, trust me, just go Google them. They're from the year 2001, right? Some of you may not have been born at that point. That's crazy, man. I, I take that point. But, <laughs> but I'm going to go and get enjoyment from playing that. I can easily sit here and play the latest football manager. Yeah. But I know from a nostalgic hit, yeah. from an endorphin hit, yeah. I can go and play a really old version of a game mm. and go, yeah, actually, do you know what? I really enjoy this. Yeah. Like, and and that's that's what you should be doing. You should be looking at games going... I need to enjoy. I need to have some fulfilment, and maybe that's what maybe that's what's lacking for me with e football. Is there's not an element there's not an element for f- fun for me anymore. Yeah. With it well, yeah, a bit of frustration said, and a bit of like a bit of like challenge that can frustrate you is 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 okay in games. I think, you know, it's kind of like the difference between going to watch a movie that engages you compared to, like you know, like say something like The Fast and the Furious, where you just switch off your brain a little bit. Yeah. I do think that gaming, there does need to be a bit of a challenge there that, like even on Mario Kart, right? I've gone back playing Mario Kart. I'm just addicted to it now, right? I play it 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Like, I don't want to r- win every single race by like, you know, a country mile, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I know that there's odd, odd matches where I won't win, right? I'm only playing in the Grand Prix, just trying to clear them all, right? And lock all the characters again. But um, there's still that challenge there that I yeah. can... You know, I could be pipped at the line with a blue shell right at the end. And it's frustrating, yeah. but it's like, right, we're going to go again. We'll do it again. Yeah. And I do think that that's with eFootball at the moment is to get it more towards the fun balance back. And I think co-op yeah. would do that. A filtering system, as you mentioned, Wes, would be huge. Um, You know, just kind of tiered rewards for like even There's a multiplier of using a weak team. And it's like, if you've got yeah. a four-star team, you get a 1.5 multipl- multiplier for your GP or trainers or... Whatever it is, you know, training points, whatever big, it is. There's some big there's some big open goals that they have there. They just need to decide what 
what ball they're going to kick in and, yeah, and whether they're going to kick it in the right direction because th- there's some very easy wins from a from a from a a mechanism standpoint some very easy wins yes technically they might be difficult to import or in, in, in you know include in the games game code or, or whatever the case may be but there's some very easy ones there like they, yeah, they are clearly glaring, will have glaringly obvious like yeah <clears throat> glaring obvious things that they could easily improve on all right, man. We're going to end it there because I'm actually I need I'm late. I need to go and play a bit of fucking soccer. We call it soccer, <laughs> right, in Ireland. So I'm not going yeah, to start. Forgot. I'm not yeah, going to yeah, change yeah. and say if it's football. Yeah, don't, right. don't, I'm going to stay true you're to my you're Irish up, roots. You'll open up the comment section. And yeah, but um, yeah, man. It's been it's been brilliant crack um, as wise. usual. So we will probably get this up on either probably tomorrow or else Friday. And as I said, lads, we are going to be getting a live. A live version of this going um i think the biggest thing is was we mentioned it before not everyone wants you know we wanted to do a kind of like a live kind of like a talk not a talk show but kind of like a thing where if somebody had a comment or somebody had a good topic and we we're like yeah that's a good topic do you want to come on and join they jump into discord they say their bit and then we can either you know argue against it or for it everyone's or we just have the discussion everyone's just going to challenge my takes that's yeah 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 happening. yeah and there'll be everyone's a lot of Aston Villa slaggers as well behind you Wes yeah. behind you <laughs> those Wes know that he's a, he's, he's a dick <laughs> <laughs> bring him on yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah that's kind of the one stumbling block yeah. we have so we just want to sort out a couple of how that's going to work whether we just do it audio whether we want video um yeah, and obviously if it's live, you know, we'll have to moderate it quite heavily because, you know, I'm sure there'll be some people out there that will want to act the idiot, um, you know, <laughs> nice. and, and stuff like that. So, look, we will try and do it that way, probably audio only, and then kind of get everybody in real time having a discussion because, yeah, I mean, they're fun. They're fun to do. And, um, yeah, Wes, thanks for thanks for joining me again as usual, man. Um, yeah, I'm, a lot of people are asking me about this podcast. When's it back? And I kind of told him that we were having a feud, that we were kind of like, <laughs> we're like the rock and stone cold uh, when they when they were having a yeah. little feud in the WWF. So, it's like, um, it's like Batman and the Joker. Is what yeah, it is. yeah. Is. So, but anyway, lads, that is it for another episode of the long awaited podcast. Um, Wes, I mean, if you have anything left to say, man, I, I got to go and get changed and do a few I'll stretches. I'll just do my so. usuals. I'll just do my usuals because obviously, you know, Barry still hasn't learned how to play the <laughs> podcast. We're available <laughs> on SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, we're on Spotify. We're basically anywhere you can get a podcast. Of course, the video version is on YouTube as YouTube, well. Baby. I have been Wes at, he's been Barry or the Midnight Kid, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Take care, guys. Peace out. <laughs>